go ahead and open up your GIMP program. Once you got that open, you're going to navigate over to the picture that you want to use. Double click it. Now once you got it all set up here, the next thing you want to do is select the lasso tool. And what you're going to create are points around the shape that you are trying to isolate for this project. So this is a long process, but I'm going to speed it up here to try to make it less painful. The idea here is to get as close to the shape that you are trying to get. And it does take a little work, but the more time you take on this part, the better the results will be. Just keep going around. Almost there. I connect the last dot and now you have a selected outline. The next step would be to copy this head over to edit select copy and now we're gonna paste it as a new image uh, once you have it in the uh, new box notice the background is transparent you're gonna head over to threshold so it's colors threshold and we're gonna move this slider from white all the way to black output that's going to black out the image that we just created next thing would be to export it and it's important to make sure that the extension you use is a png file go ahead and name the file go navigate down to the bottom here select file type and pick png the difference between PNG and JPEG is the PNG will retain the transparent background, which we're going to need. Uh, just leave those settings at default, export it. Now we have our shape. Next thing would be to launch the Cricut design space. Once it loads up, we're going to create a new project. So here's the new project and then on the bottom left there's a little cloud with an arrow that's an upload icon click that and then above the um, images if you have any select upload image or browse click browse head over to where you saved that PNG file that you created double click it and then here it's going to be a simple shape so go ahead and just pick simple it's not going to get real fancy with any designs as it's only an outline uh, go ahead and select and make sure you you pick the right side which is the uh, cut image now in here you're going to select the one that we just made which is going to be this one on this side right here Now that we have our image on the design space, we're going to make it a little bit smaller. And now we're going to add our text. Just click on the little text box. And uh, write out our words. Grow them. 
Uh, let me change this font. And we're going to use Comica Boogie. It's kind of a fun font. All right. So we got that one. Now we're going to create another text box. Gonna make this one a little smaller. All right. Now click the text again. And now we'll write out the show them. And it looks like we've got to resize this one as well. Oh, make sure when you're going to resize it, you have to double click the box to where you get the little input space. And then, then you can resize it. Then click away. Now you could use it just like this. Uh, if you want to get a little bit more creative, you can create an arch with the words. And luckily Design Space makes it very easy. I think right about there looks good. Seven point one, and then with the bottom one, you're going to do the same thing, but it's going to be a negative seven point one. Now, what I tend to like to do with these, with the with the bottom one, is to me it looks like there's too much space on those bottom letters, so I'm going to reduce. The space between them and you can do that using the letter space just shrink it down to where it looks best to you I think about there looks pretty good make whatever adjustments that you need another thing you want I want to do is align it so I like to select all the elements and align them and then you can move the letters up or down or adjust the image in the middle so that it's not too close to the other letter like in this case I think I'm gonna move that grow them up a little and try to give myself a little bit more space between the goat's head and that word about right okay next thing you want to do is you want to um, fuse all of these together so go ahead and select them again click and drag down it selects them all and there, notice on the bottom there's a thing that says fuse so fuse them what that's going to do is it's going to flatten the image and allow you to resize it and cut them uh, without uh, these letters shifting on you. Now we're going to create a copy. And this one is for the mug. It's going to have the gentleman's last name, Hubbard. Uh, I don't need the arc on this one, so I'm just going to put it to zero. And got to change that to his last name, Hubbard. If I can spell it right. Okay, and uh, letters are kind of bunched up. Uh, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to add some more space there. I'm gonna pick the default space of 1.2. That should spread them out. Yeah, it looks good. Now again, I'm gonna select them both, the image and the text box, and then use the align feature. That way, the image and the text are aligned with each other. So just select them, click align, center, and there we go and now once you've completed this step then you go ahead and use the fuse feature there's our first image click fuse now we'll grab our next image fuse and now we have two images and words that are treated as one image by Cricut Design Space 
Now we got to make sure that they're going to fit on the items that we're going to put. So I've already measured the item. It's about four inches uh, tall. Both the space where I'm going to use on the mug along with the candy jar. So just four inches tall. That's the max. And then you're going to click on make it. Now I've already made the project. Uh, but once you get to this step, what you want to do is arrange these images on the mat and it will cut them out exactly in these in these places each one each one of these boxes is an inch so i like to give myself a little space in between the images because i'm going to be taping them together since i've already made them it's not going to find the printer but the next step would be to uh, go ahead and uh, place the vinyl on the mat put the mat in the machine and have the machine cut it out. We have a very good friend that is a goat breeder and uh, we thought we'd make him a couple of unique gifts. So what we have here is a beer mug with a uh, silhouette of the goat that he breeded. This goat uh, was a grand champion in a few shows. That is his exact silhouette. We created that from a picture that we had of him. The gentleman's last name is Hubbard. So we will be etching this into this beer mug using 80 grit garnet, blasting at 20 PSI. Another part of the gift is a candy jar. The guy loves sweets. And what we did here is use the same uh, goat silhouette, just a little bit smaller. And he's a breeder, so he grows them, and he's also an exhibitor, and he shows them. So without further ado, let me get uh, these items loaded into the machine, and we'll get blasted. By the way, guys, if you like the videos I'm putting out, make sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notification bells, and hit me up with questions. I love hearing from you guys. If there's anything that is unclear, or you guys are trying to put your own systems together, just let me know. I'm here to help, and I'd love to see what you guys are doing out there. All done, about three minutes and 40 seconds each. And what you want to do before you take the paper out is make sure to give it a quick inspection. Make sure that uh, it looks like the glass is frosty before you peel this off. There's a little wet spot up there. I know that's good. And uh, let's inspect this one. Yep, this one also looks good. All right, guys, let me uh, pull this tape off and we'll see what we got. They turned out great. So here we got the Hubbard beer mug. It's a real nice etch. See it on the other side. Super cool. Hey, these mugs are a great deal, by the way, guys, at uh, Walmart. They're under $2. Awesome. And then we have the uh, candy jar. Grow them and show them.
These will make a great gift for anybody. All right, guys. Till next time.